When Apple announced Final Cut Pro 10.8 a few weeks ago, there were two things that really struck my eye. One being renaming adjustments and the other one being the machine learning enhanced light and color feature. Especially since Apple wrote that it will work with SDR, HDR, RAW and log encoded media. Honestly, I spent some time in 10.8 and did my research and I'm not really sure what to make of that. But we'll get there. Please note that I will only go through the color related features and into the nitty gritty details about them. There are a couple of other features in this update I won't cover. For those things you can read the patch notes or you can check out Dylan Bates video where he gives a fantastic overview of all the new features. First, before updating to Final Cut Pro 10.8, make sure you back up your current version. Because once you hit update, you cannot go back to your older version. To back up Final Cut Pro, go into your applications folder and find the Final Cut Pro app. Then right click on it and select compress. Then once it is compressed, I recommend renaming that zip file to the version you saved. In my case, that's 10.7.1. Now you just need to archive it somewhere safe. And if you ever need to go back to an older version, you can just unzip it and launch it from there. Now we're inside of 10.8. As mentioned in the beginning, we can finally rename effects. For example, this instance of color wheels is where I balance my shot. Therefore, I can call that balance. You can rename an effect by double clicking it or right click and rename. Also, if you hover with your mouse over here, you can see the original name Color Wheels. If you want to go back, just right click and select Reset Name. Renaming the effects works with all of the effects and not just with the color adjustments. So let's say you want to apply a 50s TV effect, you can just rename this as well. Like so. And you can rename third party plugins as well. So if I search for black hole in here, you can see I have the black hole effect from Dylan Bates' fantastic motion tools. So I just apply it and rename it. Thanks Dylan. Another great feature I didn't know I wanted is being able to drag effects directly from the inspector onto the clip. So let's go into this color wheels effect and let's apply a very strong color cast. Imagine I want to apply this effect to this shot as well. I just move my playhead to the other clip and select the first clip. Then I can drag this color wheels adjustment onto this clip and here we go. Additionally, let's get rid of this. If I select the other clip again, I can just drag it into the viewer and this works as well. Moving on to the index, you can now find offline effects. Just click this magnifying glass and select missing effects. Then the index will show you all clips with the missing effects. As you can see, you can filter now by various criteria. Unfortunately, this doesn't work with LUTs. As you can see, the LUT I'm using down here is offline. I just moved it outside of the folder. If I now go in here and select missing effects, you can see that this clip doesn't show up. So unfortunately, the index won't show missing LUTs, but all in all, being able to find missing plugins is just great. Last but not least, let's talk about the feature I was most curious about. Enhance light and color. Enhance light and color doesn't come as a standalone effect. It's inside the color adjustments correction. Here you can see there is a new button, enhance light and color. You could also enhance only the light or the color. Let's click the button and see what happens. Here we go. I think Final Cut Pro did a really good job. Again, you can toggle the light off and on and you can toggle the color off and on. Let's switch to my workspace with the comparison viewer. First, let's disable this and save a still. Now enable this. I go out of full screen mode and pull up my digital color meter. Okay, before any adjustments, let's have a look at neutral gray. Neutral gray was sitting at red 119, green 115 and blue 120. So the shot was overall a little bit too magenta. Let's have a look at what Enhanced Light and Color did. As you can see, red 119, green 117 and blue 118. Very, very close to neutral gray. So overall, I think it works great. Let's get rid of the digital color meter and go back into full screen. As you can see, if you apply the color adjustments effect, there's a magic wand over here, which lets you trigger the automatic enhancement. Also, let's get rid of this one. You can also access the effect using the magic wand and select Enhanced Light and Color. As I first tried this, I was blown away because this could be a very legitimate color balancing tool, especially since color balance is atrocious. Let's save a still of what we did with the color adjustments. Here we go. 
and let's get rid of them. Now I will apply a balance color adjustment. And with the method set to automatic, this result is just unacceptable. And this is a shot of a color chart. The conditions don't get better than this. Okay then, let's try the white balance. I use the eyedropper and sample an area that should be pure white. In this example, this would be the brightest patch on the color chart. Here we go. And again, comparing it to this version using the enhanced light and color adjustment, this is miles ahead of this one. Does this now mean that enhanced light and color is finally a usable color balancing tool? Well, uh, as you just saw in our example, with regular Rec. 709 footage, it works wonderfully. But let's move on to the same clip, but in S-Log3. Remember, Apple claimed log and raw compatibility. So let's disable the LUT and pull up an instance of color adjustments. Then I will select enhance light and color and see what happens. Yeah, and this is the issue I have. I didn't know what I was expecting, but I already knew that this tool will not convert your footage from log to Rec. 709. This is just not what the tool is meant to be. To transform your color space from your recording color space to Rec. 709, there are technical color space transformation LUTs you should use. This is not a task for AI. So then let's reset this. Let's enable the LUT and try the same again. And as you can see, everything works just wonderfully. But there is an issue with that. Let me explain. The signal in the inspector flows from top to bottom. Once the signal hits the LUT, it gets transformed from slog 3 sgamma 3cine into Rec. 709. This means the color adjustments effect down here now operates in Rec. 709 because it comes after the LUT. But again, Apple said it is optimized for log footage as well. Okay, let's reset this one more time and move it before the LUT. If I now click the magic wand, let's see what happens. As you can see, this is not at all comparable to the version we did before. Okay then, you might say. What if you do the log conversion yourself? You pull up an instance of color curves and color wheels. First, you take care of the contrast. Something like this, just really quick and dirty. And then you go to the color wheels and increase the saturation. What about now? If I go in here and select enhance light and color, you can see everything works just fine. But again, Final Cut Pro did it downstream to my conversion to Rec. 709. So the issue remains the same. The signal flows from top to bottom and this is my conversion to Rec. 709. This means the color adjustments now operates on Rec. 709 again. Let's reset this and push it up. If I now click the magic wand tool again, you can see the same error happens. So I'm not really sure what to make of this because balancing color should happen before the conversion to Rec. 709. Let's move on to a clip shot in RAW then. As you can see, the camera was a red V-Raptor 8K and if I scroll down here, we have the red RAW settings. And again, this shot comes into my timeline as Rec. 709 BT1886. This means if I apply an enhanced light and color adjustment, it will now reference the Rec. 709 color space again. Let's delete this. If I go into the information tab and modify the red raw settings again, if I don't want to transform this to Rec. 709 but red color 4 instead, and with a gamma of log 3 G12, then I get a proper log image. Going back to the inspector, if I now apply enhanced light and color, you can see it did a better job than it did with S-Log3, but again, this tool is not meant to transform from log to Rec. 709. This is just for balancing color. So I'm not really sure how to make use of this feature in a proper color grading workflow. And maybe it's just not meant for that. Let's go back to the clip of the color checker in S-Log3. If I apply the LUT and then click enhance light and color, couldn't you just say don't bother and put it after the LUT? No, regular viewers of my channel know that this approach can be a deadly mistake. If you want to know why, please check my playlist on signal chain hierarchy and order of operations. This would go too deep for this video. I link the playlist in the video description. To wrap things up, that doesn't mean I think this new feature is bad. Not at all. I think it's really, really solid. But it's just not for me and maybe not for you either. I would have really appreciated a one-click approach to color balancing a shot. However, DaVinci Resolve has had a similar feature for ages. And back when I was still working as a freelance colorist, I wasn't using that either. Because I would constantly need to correct some minor errors it would make and sometimes it would make major errors as well. If I have to touch the buttons anyway, I might as well do it myself. Balancing a shot takes me 20 to 30 seconds tops, so it wasn't a huge time saver for me anyway. The new enhanced light and color feature feels the same. It's neat, but it's not for me. And if it isn't for people who care about the craft of color grading, who is it for? Well, everybody else. If you're a vlogger and you're shooting a straight in Rec. 709, great. This feature will honestly save you so much time. 
Basically, everybody who doesn't want or need to creatively grade their footage will tremendously benefit from this. But if you really care about color because it's part of your visual storytelling and creative expression, it's just not for you. Overall, I think Final Cut Pro 10.7 and 10.8 are great steps in the right direction. And I have some additional thoughts on that, especially when considering what happened at WWDC this month. But this is a topic for another video. Subscribe if you don't want to miss that. And if you want to know why you probably don't understand exposure and color grading, you should watch this video next.